Hi everybody! Today I am going to talk about trains and the effect that they had on everyday life and history in the world of Reconstruction and also in our history. The first steam locomotive engine was created in 1804 by the inventor Richard Trevithick. He was an Englishman after being told that what he intended to do was impossible. No one at that time could imagine that a steam engine could power anything that wasn't stationary, but Trevithick definitely proved them wrong when his locomotive prototype, named the Penny Darren, managed to pull 70 tons of material no, 25 tons of material and 70 passengers, four kilometers on a track, and made the journey in an hour and 15 minutes, which was unheard of at the time. Trevithick's decision to end his involvement with steam locomotives opened up the door for another Englishman, George Stevenson, to pick up where he left off. In 1813, Stevenson created his first prototype almost completely by hand, called the Boucher, which was able to haul a very large load uphill. Stevenson went on to build a second, even more successful prototype called the Rocket, which laid the foundation for just about every train design for the next 150 years. It didn't take long for US entrepreneurs to start seeing the merits and money that could be saved by creating trains and railways to haul goods and people. And in 1828, America's first railroad, the Baltimore Ohio Railroad, was opened with much pomp and circumstance. <laughs> This caused a massive wave of locomotive and railway building. In the 1850s, over 9,000 miles of track had been built east of the Missouri River, and talk of a transcontinental railway began to reach Congress. In 1861, Theodore Judah, a, an engineer turned entrepreneur was able to get Abraham Lincoln to sign the Pacific Railroad Act into law, which officially chartered the first Continental Railroad. Then, almost immediately after the Civil War ended, two railroad companies, the Union Pacific in the East and the Central Pacific in the West, began to lay the track for the Transcontinental Railroad in 1865. This rapidly turned into a competition between the two companies. They both frequently traded quality for speed during the building, and many of the bridges actually had to be rebuilt after the railroad was finished because they were unsafe. The Transcontinental Railroad was completed in 1869 with the legendary Golden Spike driven in at Promontory Summit in Utah, just after President Grant's inauguration. In the world of Reconstruction, the timeline for the trains is about the same, however the designs are significantly more advanced due to the fact that electricity has been harnessed. Many of them are beginning to be powered by electricity and can go hundreds of miles an hour. The train that the fight takes place on is a much older model, seeing as the characters can leap from it and not be dead. And there you have it. Trains in the world of Reconstruction, they are very important. Feel free to leave a comment at the end of this installment, or message me on my blog, or my Twitter, or my YouTube. I really do enjoy hearing from you guys. And if you guys enjoyed this installment, please leave it a plus vote. Myself and Isaac and company greatly appreciate it. And the song for the day is All the King's Horses by Two Steps from Hell. It is a train fight in a song. Literally. That is the only way I can describe it. It is a train fight in a song. And without further ado, I will let you get to the next installment.